What's up guys, Creighton here from LogicLounge.com. Today we are going to be taking a look at Internet Explorer 11. Now, Internet Explorer 11 is due to be shipped with Windows 8.1 on October 18th, which is just a few days away, so I thought we'd take a look at Internet Explorer 11 to preview what all the new features are and give a little outline for it since it's been long enough with the developer preview so far it is initially the final version maybe only a couple tweaks will be shipped with the final Windows 8.1 version so first off let's look at our machine here we do have a Windows 8 machine you can see here when I go to the desktop we have our little uh, information window right here saying that this is Windows 8.1 Pro Preview. It's evaluation copy and it's build 9431, which is the most updated at the time of release of this video. So, Internet Explorer 11 is broken up into two parts. The parts for the desktop, which is your general Internet Explorer interface. You can see here that we are war uh, warning running excuse me, Internet Explorer 11 with that build number, that very, very, very long build number. And it also has the modern interface type. And you won't see any differences between the two when it comes to visually uh, changes. It's all back-end changes that are supposed to make the web browser better, supposed to make it faster, to work better with everything. Now, I'm not exactly sure how good and how accurate they are claiming this to be. I can only give my personal experiences and benchmarks that I have ran with this to give you my personal opinion. Now, Internet Explorer 11 comes about in the middle of the pack. I believe it is below uh, Google Chrome and Firefox, but is above Opera and all of those other web browsers. And I put it there because Microsoft is actually trying to make a huge leap into the market with all of their compatibilities. Now, I will tell you that not all of their compatibilities are the best. If I go to, I believe it's HTML5Test.com, we can see how it rates out of 500 for its readiness for HTML5. Now it's getting there. It's got a score of 355 out of 500. And as you scroll through the list here, you can see the imperfections of this web browser. Most of it is good, though. I mean, a lot of the... Um, a lot of the blanket stuff that we will use every day is there, so you don't need to worry about that. It's much more of those finite details uh, that can get a little bit of confusing. Something like right here with video support. It doesn't have MPEG-4 support, nor does it have OGG support, nor does it have WIMM support. But you see, though, that it does have H.264 support. So it it has its balances between good and bad. Same goes with audio as well, what it supports. And some of those are kind of obvious. Maybe it might not support it because it's not such popularized as other audio formats. You can see it supports MP3 and AAC, but it doesn't support OGG formats, nor does it support WebM. So you have a trade-off here of what's popular to what's least popular in um the era. Now, of course, there are some of the uh, bigger things that you really want to take a look at that maybe it kind of falls behind on. Uh, you can see it has a really low score in form data. This is HTML5 form data. You can see it doesn't support a lot of commands there that HTML5 has basically made a priority when it comes to making your web browser uh, compatible with everything. It has no support for micro data, so that is something of to note. And it does have low, uh, uh, low scores for security and other various. You can see it doesn't have seamless iframe, nor does it have iframe with inline contents uh, as security measures. And of course, you have that various stuff there that uh, you can view in full detail. If you just download a copy yourself when you get it or not, you can go to html5test.com. It will help you out there uh, with 
being able to gauge whether your browser is good or not for your system. Now there is one more test uh, that I usually use, and I believe uh, it is, and I always forget the name, uh, it's from these one people that I can't remember because I'm doing this video live to tape. There it is, called Peacekeeper by uh, Futuremark. Futuremark is a huge competitor when it comes into benchmarking statistics. They do a lot of the big PC benchmarks that a lot of people use and trust for benchmarking computers, uh, figuring out what type of graphics that they can run. Well, if you didn't know, they actually have a browser tester as well. Now, if you can see by the graphic on their homepage, you can really tell how far along these browsers are. Of course, Google Chrome comes out on top, followed by Opera, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari. Now, when I ran this test, which is a series of HTML5 tests that might happen in the real world, it has hanged on a couple of key tests that I would say is crucial when it comes to choosing a browser that is ready for HTML5 as well as everyday browsing. So uh, you can see it's running through this test just fine, and, and that's great, but there are more tests as you go along. Here's a full five-minute test. You can do this to your own browser as well. Um, that it has issues. It hangs. It doesn't load the page correctly. So there's those little details in there that you might want to be aware of when coming to look at the browser and picking the right browser for it. So we won't run this test completely all the way through because I don't want to waste a full five minutes from you guys, but I do want to outline the basics and the issues that I've had with some benchmarking and uh, compatibility tests that I have had with this browser. Uh, and between the modern interface and this interface, the abilities, the improvements are the same between the two it's just the frame that you have on it so microsoft is claiming that internet explorer is going to be faster with web browsing uh, better 2d and 3d experiences along with getting on screens of all size as well as being compatible with more and more websites now if we go to for example our website logiclounge.com you'll see that it loads the website just fine no issues whatsoever so i do give internet explorer props because our website is coded in a lot of html5 and we've had some issues in the past with internet explorer that's why we've largely not supported internet explorer um, that has some issues with our website, loading only a singular column of data, showing a lot of white space. But as I'm looking and browsing through logiclounge.com, it's actually looking pretty good. All of our content looks exactly as it should be with no issues, no errors, no um, anything that kind of strikes my mind as strange. And I can also head back over to our desktop and uh, load up logiclounge.com as we leave the benchmark page and you can see it loads it up just fine no issues whatsoever now google chrome has this feature i'm not sure if internet explorer has this feature but our website is a fluid website meaning that if you stretch it and pull it it will change the interface that you see so if you're loading logic lounge on a mobile website it will load in a mobile friendly platform so if i were to go like this and just continue going you can see it's starting to change. Now, if I go really small like that into a nice singular column, you can see it's changed into a nice singular column of data. This is exactly how it should work. So I'm very happy that it has this fluid switching of um, HTML5 modes to bring a mobile interface or a full desktop experience right to you. So I'm very happy about that, not only for logiclanguage.com, but for a lot of websites that I visited with Internet Explorer 11. So if you are an avid Internet Explorer user, Internet Explorer 11 will bring a lot of those features and a lot of the hassles that you maybe have had with your uh, with different websites. Um, 
it could fix all of that. Now, of course, I really don't recommend Internet Explorer. It's just a personal preference, but you can do whatever you want. I'm just giving you my personal preference. I usually like to use Firefox or Google Chrome, but then again, you can use whatever you want. So I think that about wraps it up really for uh, Windows 8 uh, with Internet Explorer 11. It will be available very soon when you get the Windows 8.1 update. So be sure to look about that for around the corner. Be sure to also give your experiences to us in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, share, comment, rate, all of that fun stuff that you do for us that makes us a great, great place to be. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Creighton Miller. As you can see me right there on the video preview page, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit the like button on our, on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Once again, my name is Creighton Miller, and I will see you guys in our next video.